So oh, I just recently um, uncovered a story um, on NBC News and I kind of wanted to share it with y'all. So let's react to it together. This court grants defendant's motion. <laughs> Tonight, tears of relief, nearly 40 years in the making. I'm still crying with joy and relief right now today. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I, Words can't describe it. Anthony Broadwater exonerated by a New York State Supreme Court judge this week at 61 years old. After spending most of his life paying for a crime he didn't commit. With joy and relief, I went up to the gravesite to see my dad to tell him. I wish to God he was here. Broadwater was 20 when he was charged with the rape of Alice Siebold, who went on to write bestseller The Lovely Bones. The alleged crime happened in 1981 at a park in Syracuse, New York. Siebold described the attack in detail almost 20 years later in Lucky, a book that launched her career as an author. Her next hit, The Lovely Bones, was later adapted into an award-winning film. But all this was after Broadwater was convicted for first-degree rape and five related charges. He spent 16 years in prison. Through the years, he maintained his innocence. After serving his sentence, he quickly realized his life would never be the same. The moment I stepped out, it was like impossible to get a job. These 10 fingers, I can count on my hand of the people that accept me in the household. I can't get past 10. He never stops trying through appeals, motions, and even two polygraph tests to prove his innocence, but nothing worked. Until a film producer working on a screen adaptation of Siebold's book Lucky hired a private investigator to look into the evidence presented against Broadwater in court. They became convinced Broadwater was telling the truth. Earlier this month, Broadwater's new lawyers filed a motion to vacate his conviction based on now discredited scientific evidence and Siebold's identification of Broadwater as the perpetrator. No one questions that Ms. Siebold was sexually assaulted. She absolutely was. But she saw Mr. Broadwater on the street about five months later, had a feeling this was the person who had raped her and reported it to police. She really? is asked to look at the individuals at some point. So that's, in the lineup, that's concrete evidence. Five. Anthony Broadwater was number four. Attorneys say they learned the next part of the story from Siebold's book, which they presented to the court as new evidence. After that, the prosecutor walks in the room and begins to tell her well, you picked the wrong guy, but essentially, don't worry, your hunch is correct. It actually is number four. Despite not picking him out of the lineup, at the trial, Siebold claimed Broadwater was the perpetrator. In a statement on Broadwater, the Onondaga County District Attorney, who supported the exoneration, said in part, it is never too late to do the right thing. A spokesperson for Scribner, the publisher of Lucky, telling NBC News neither Alice Siebold nor Scribner has any comment. Scribner has no plans to update the text of Lucky at this time. Now that you've been exonerated, what does the rest of your life look like? I hope, right, I hope that I can give some inspiration to somebody and say, hey, if you're not guilty of something, do not give in. I've been yelling and screaming and, and exhausting all my finances to prove my innocence. It finally came. All right, now there you guys got it. So, kind of the reality of what it is to be a man, even far less a black man living in this in today's modern society like that's that's one thing that i completely fear you know just walking down the street and then a woman says something that i did that i didn't actually do she just randomly identifies me as somebody who did something and it turns out i didn't do it and then i lose years of my life and that was the major problem with the law system back then like and even still, even now, especially in America and maybe here in Barbados as well, a lady can just say stuff, identify you as a perpetrator, and they believe it completely. I believe that women nowadays have more rights than men, especially with this, this feminist movement and everything. And I, I do believe in the original feminist movement. Let, don't get me wrong there. I believe in the original one. But the one now where it says that women are superior to men, I do not believe in that one because I disagree. But there's just, just this fact that somebody can just 
identify you, especially a woman can just identify you and say, he's the person who did this to me is ludicrous to me. It's I, that's why I want you guys to do a couple things, right? Whenever you're dealing with women, make sure that you are always protected. Make sure that you do not overstep your bounds. Do not do not go overboard with your interactions. Don't unnecessarily touch them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because these things can get to a point where, like this man, he lost 16 years of his life for something that he did not do. And it wasn't until recently where he got exonerated. His life was hard afterwards. He, he was punished for something that he did not do. And I'm not saying that they are not garbage guys out there who will just do that are that are guilty of doing this stuff and if i believe that if you do that to somebody you're you're you belong in prison you belong doing some uh some capital work or something some something serious because if you can't control your your impulses then what are you doing out with the rest of us being free with the rest of us and they and men like this scare women and then they don't trust other men like myself and uh, and i'm sure like a lot of you out there i believe that men like that should be should be dealt with but you got to make sure you have the right person you got to make sure that you do the correct trial and know know that we have all the technology and all the things that we need to make sure that we we adequately trial people and we understand you know where we are at and we understand we have proof that it happened and not just off of a witness or not necessarily a witness, but fingers pointing, then we can definitely do some real good in, in the world and definitely reduce a lot of these hard convictions in America. I'm from what I've heard from other YouTubers, Auburn Preach and some other people, I, I have seen that. You know, a vast majority of American poli I mean, um, laws or convictions are, I wouldn't say majority, but a large amount of American um, convictions, especially when it deals with women, are fake convictions or convictions that shouldn't happen because they weren't true. So that's one thing that scares me most about being in America. And if you're, guys, if you're going to deal with a woman sexually, like, Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that it is something mutual or she initiates it first. It's very, it's even good if you, if she initiates it first, but if she isn't initiating it first, if you have to initiate it first, make sure that she's completely cool with it. Because at the end of the day, as I said, she can easily go out to a police station and say, this man did this to me and you can be put in some serious hot water and they will not investigate it properly. You can see with this man here as an example where he had to go through a whole lot of stuff, years and years and years and years, almost 20 to 40 years of his life trying to get himself off of something for him, something he was telling the truth of for years. Do you think that that is fair? It's not fair. And for me, if, if a woman was to do that to me, I would be so upset. And I and I and I respect this dude for I respect him for being able to say, you know, um, I forgive her. I, I don't know. It's something that happens with guys that like these who are wrongfully accused of something. And, you know, it, it's, it's something on them that they they somehow just know, you know, I need to just forgive. I don't think that I'm there yet. <laughs> straight up i don't think that i would be there yet like bro she... don't even try me like that yeah so just just be careful y'all straight up i the, the 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 anger that would boil up in me after you know and when you're in jail you have that cell around you have nothing to do but be with your thoughts and sometimes your thoughts can get really, really jaded, really, really quick. So, yeah, I don't think that I'm there yet. So, and then on top of that, she made this bullshit ass, dumbass apology, talking about how uh, she's sorry that they robbed 16 years of her of the life. Woman, you robbed the man of his life. 
because you felt like he was the one that did it to you. Sorry, you dumb. Like, and and as you guys heard me say, she's not even that cute. I like. I can't wrap my head around this stuff sometimes, y'all. Like, it's... <sighs> you know what? Be careful out there, guys. Just keep your hands to yourself if you need to. And do what you gotta do, bro. But... <sighs> Let me know what you guys think about the video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I know that most of you are younger guys. Which is why I want to teach y'all this early. To make sure that you protect yourself and protect you know your integrity because as you can hear from him he struggled to get a job he struggled to get people to live with, with to live with them you know and you don't ever want to get your life destroyed like that so be careful out there guys i'll see you guys next have a great day have a great week remember to follow me on my socials and uh yeah hope you guys enjoy peace